at Arnold's Muffler Shop that the customers arrive at a rate of three per hour. All right, and this is an important one because when we say, uh, or sorry, the, the, the first part is they, they can install mufflers. Installing mufflers, that is the service being performed. So in other words, that is your MU. Can you see that? And when you read your question, this is what you're going to have to identify. Two things you're going to have to identify is lambda and mu. This case is saying Arnold can install mufflers at a rate of three per hour. Then they tell you the customers arrive at a rate of two per hour. Arrive is your lambda. And you put your lambda next to that. So you already, you now have the two things that you need for all of these calculations. You need lambda and mu. Alright? And in this case, lambda is two cars per hour. Do, are we working in the same time period? Yes, because they're both in, in hours. And your mu is three per hour. Alright? So we're all good there. Now we can calculate the cars in the system on average. We can use the formula L to calculate that. And L is then lambda over mu minus lambda. You just plug in your variables into the formula. So wherever there's lambda, you put a 2. Wherever there's mu, you put a 3. So this question is in 2 over 3 minus 2, which is 2 over 1, which is 2 cars in the system. You do the same if I ask you the question, what is the time that a car spends waiting in the system. I could ask you what is the time that the car wa spends waiting in the queue. I could ask you what is the time that the car spends waiting in the system. And this is where students then go wrong. They don't read the question or don't interpret the question and they end up calculating the wrong thing. I've seen this so many times. You guys might find it daunting to, rem to memorize seven formulas now. But believe me, that's the easy part. The difficult part is, or the challenging part, is understanding what I'm asking. If I, and I'm not going to always ask, so the question don't, is not always that simple, to say, well, how many time is spent in the system? It's going to say, how much time do cars spend from the time that they enter the shop until the time that they leave? Look at how that's been described. And that means, if you think about it, from the time that they enter the queue until they leave, so that's the entire system. So I must calculate W. So what do students do wrong? They calculate WQ. They have the right formulas, but they get zero for that question because they've used the right formula in the wrong place. And quite often when I mark this, it's just swapped around. A is where B should be, D is where C should be, E is where F should be, and they memorize, they know how to do this, but they don't know how to think through a question logically. So beware of that. I'm warning you. You can get 15 full marks or you get zero. <clears throat> next one the next one we can calculate is LQ what does LQ tell us it's the number of is it the number of customers number of customers in the queue waiting in the queue on average all right so L is always a number of it's not time and in this case, we're concerned with only the Q. So when we calculate LQ, we can calculate the cars waiting on average, the number of cars waiting in the queue. WQ. W is always time. And this is time spent waiting in the queue. WQ. And they spend on average 40 minutes. Look at this calculation. WQ is lambda mu minus uh, lambda uh, times mu. But it gives you a fraction of 2 over 3 hours. Or 0.67 hours. But what happens in reality is that we don't talk about 0.67 hours. If you, if somebody asks you the question, how long did you wait in registration or at registration? You're not going to tell them, I waited for 0.67 hours. Right? You're going to multiply that by 60 and then you're going to tell them, I waited for 40 minutes in the queue. So, quite often, I mean, I would mark this right. Up until that point as well, you'll get your, your mark. But it's just nice to express that again in terms of how we talk in everyday language. All right? So, I, I'm, uh, well, this is something, just a nicety at the end. They're just expressing this, and you're going to see this and often with examples. That is the right answer, and that's where you can stop with 0.67 hours. But in reality, when you talk in everyday language, 
you just multiply that by 60 again to get it into minutes. This is not where you're converting lambda or mu into the same time period of 20 per hour, 2 per hour, and 3 per hour. That's not. This is your answer that you're busy converting into minutes. All right. All right. The next question they, they're asking is, what is the percentage time that the mechanic is busy? Quite important question. Is this guy sitting around only being busy for half a day, a third of the day, two-thirds of the day? And we do that by calculating a row, all right? Um, and, and row is obviously calculated by saying lambda over mu, 2 over 3 is 0.6. So, remember, that's the other problem that students have. They calculate probabilities and they want to give you it in hours. Or they calculate probabilities. Uh, uh, number, the number of customers, and you want to put that into minutes or hours. Remember what you're calculating. If you're calculating a probability, it's a fraction out of one. Or it's a percentage. All right? So this is 0.67 time or the probability that the guy is, is uh, busy, or 67% of the time he's, of his day he's busy. A row, or sorry, probability that is idle on the other hand, is the, just one minus 0.67 which is that over there, or that's the formula to do it, all right? The probability that there are no cars in the system, <coughs> that there's no one at the shop, the shop is standing there quiet, is 33% or 0.33. The third, uh, uh, or the last calculation that you can do is the probability that there are more than so many cars in the system. So the probability with this little formula of n greater than k equal to lambda over mu k plus 1. And here they've just done it in a continuous manner. manner. So you could see n bigger than 3 is that much. n bigger than 4 is that much. n bigger than 5 is that much. So you're doing your formula P. Um, what is your formula? Your formula is P for n bigger than k is equal to lambda over mu to the power k plus 1. And if you're doing more than 3 cars, obviously you're putting 3 as your k, all right? And so on. But you can see, and this is, I think, what they're ultimately trying to show you. The probability that there are more than 4 cars is now smaller. The probability that there are more than 5 cars is even smaller. So the probability that there is more than 1, just... So if there's just one person, what's the probability that there's more than one is still quite big. It's a 40, um, 44%, all right? It's 30% for more than two, and it's 20% for more than three. And in reality, that's the case. If you go to the cashier uh, at pick and pay, for example, the probability that there are a lot of people there at some point in time becomes smaller. Probability there's more than one year is still big. Probability more than two is still big. And, and, but when you're more than 10, more than 20 becomes a smaller probability on this question. This calculation tells you the probability that there's more than 1 or more than 2 or more than 3 for n bigger than k. Oh, all right? But you can also have a question that they ask you for the probability where n is exactly equal to k. What we've been calculating up to now, we've been calculating up to now the situation that if that is your continuum, and I ask you to calculate the probability that there is more than two cars. That's one car, that's two cars. I've asked you to calculate everything to the right of two. Bigger than two, not two. Everything bigger than two. All right? If I'm asking you to calculate the probability that n is bigger than 1, I'm asking you to calculate everything bigger than 1, not 1. All right? But in this variation of the question, I could also ask you, what is the probability that there is exactly two cars? So not bigger than 2, not smaller than 2, exactly 2. And in order to do that, you have to calculate the probability where n is bigger than 1, and you have to calculate the probability where n is bigger than 2, and subtract the one from the other. That will give you that exact point over there. 
So if I'm asking you, what is the probability all right, that there are exactly two cars in the queue? You have to look at everything bigger than two, and you have to look at everything bigger than one, and if you subtract the one from the other, you will get to exactly two cars in the system. In this case, you can understand that the chance or the likelihood that there's more than one car in the system will be bigger than more than two cars. So when you do the calculation, you say the probability that there's more than one subtracted from the probability that there's more than two will give me exactly two over there. All right. So this is another formula that you guys just need to take cognizance of. And it's a variation on this formula over there, which is probability that n is bigger than k. This is the probability that n is exactly equal to k. And you subtract the smaller probability from the bigger probability. You'll get to that point over there.